Today, I want to share with you what is at the heart of leadership, and I want to challenge conventional thinking. So let me start with the beginning. It was some 30 years ago when I was sitting in a classroom at high school, and I was looking around, and I had the feeling the teachers, the students, my peers, my colleagues were not really excited, engaged. No one really could make sense of the subjects in the wider context of life. And I decided to investigate into this. So early on, as a student, I looked into this, and it came about two distinct but interrelated questions. The first one is about how do I inspire myself to discover and grow my potential, even under the fiercest circumstances? And the second question is how can I inspire and enable other people to grow their potential? Second question relates to organizational leadership. It relates to corporate managers, to orchestra conductors, to teachers, to parents, to politicians, to community leaders, to all of us. So today I address you as leaders, because both questions are at the core of leadership, and both are relevant for you. Let us look at the working world. Studies show a shocking picture. Some 75% of the workforce is actively disengaged. What does this mean? That means they're emotionally disconnected from their work. It means that the employee who is sitting in the call center is hesitant to call back the customer because he doesn't care enough. It means that the other employee who is in a development team responsible for improving products and services doesn't go the extra mile because he's not up for it. Just imagine a company with 100 people and 75 people wishing not to be there. At the same time, we know that there is a close relationship between engagement at work and company performance. So this engagement has severe implications for the well-being of people and corporations, and the costs already go into the three-digit billions. Company after company is struggling to find common ground to agree on outcomes. Leaders fail to collaborate together to create a common understanding for what their challenges are and to resolve them. They haven't realized yet that leadership, in essence, is a collective activity which happens at every level of the organization. If we could get half of the people back into engagement, being engaged. It would make a world of a difference. We don't need to invest billions into innovations if, on the other end, we lose people into disengagement just because we don't care enough. We can do better than this. We can flip around economies by making sure we have engaged people and build leadership capacity everywhere in the organizations, in schools, in our business organizations, in our public organizations, it would make such a huge difference. It would have ramifications for our businesses, for our social sector, for education, for so many different areas. You maybe want to know what I think what leadership means. For me, it's a matter of attitude. Let me give you my definition. To me, a leader is an inspired person who longs to contribute to the well-being of humankind. It's a person who has a desire to grow as a person, to become better at this. It's a person who has a purpose in life. Everyone can be such a leader, and everyone can grow qualities and skills to live up to this. What does this mean for our organizations? It means that we have to develop leaders in such a way that enable them to see beyond their immediate reality that they can make sense of their day-to-day -day activities in a wider context of life, that they can link their contribution to the purpose of the organization, given that the organization knows exactly what its purpose is. In 2003, I was um, invited by the University of St. Gallen to come and develop a master's degree program from scratch, focusing on educating young leaders. 
At the time, I was in Munich. I was consulting companies and I was coaching and developing executives in leadership issues. I was quite thrilled about this opportunity because I thought, let's see whether my definition of leadership can be applied into formal management education. Can I inspire young people to adopt leadership as their life's mission? So I went there with a big vision. I didn't know whether it would work out, but I did it. So let me share with you one of the ideas I put into practice. I have a class of young leaders. I put them into teams, mixed teams, mixed by gender, skills, language, cultural background. And after giving them some foundational knowledge and boosting their confidence, I throw them into different situations around the world with the mission to find solutions to some of the world's most intractable, most desperate problems. So off they go to those countries, to those places, and they're overwhelmed with the issues they find, they're confronted with. Adversity, misery, health issues, extreme poverty, injustice. And, you know, they kind of feel somehow almost lost. How should, how should they do that? It's just a team. The issues are so big. And they realize we have to collaborate. We have to find partners. And they get you know, emotionally drained. They start talking about their emotions, about their concerns, about their fears, their aspirations, their ideas. In short, they become fully engaged. And this feeling of being fully engaged comes from within, because it touched their hearts. In such a state, you can link your personal contribution to a larger cause, something which is much more significant and meaningful than the project itself. And this is the moment when you start growing as a leader. So let me share with you some of the initiatives which these young leaders, students in this program, have accomplished. Have you ever built a school in the slums of Haiti? A group of young leaders, a team, went there in 2010 into Canaan and started this project and inspired the next generations of young leaders who entered this program, and today the project is still running. Or ever outfitted an Indonesian island with the means to produce purified drinking water? A team went there three years ago and equipped some hundred families with biosand water filters to purify their drinking water and improve their health. Again, through their inspiration, other students and young leaders were inspired and they took it up until today, it's running. Or improving finance skills in Paraguay's rural communities. Or developing a product line from recycled material in South Africa and using the profits to pay school supplies for children there. All these things the students did, these young leaders. 280 went through that so far, from 40 nationalities, raised up some 35 projects. Several projects are running quite a few years. What are the takeaways? What are the takeaways? The students come back emotionally drained, even frustrated partly because they also deal with failures, not only successes. They had to deal with them, go over them. They had were challenged. They have grown. They have matured. They have learned what it means to take on responsibility for something which is much bigger than their career span, so to speak, in this course. And they have grown confidence but without boosting their egos along the way. And it is my hope that when these students take on their first or second full-time job, that they ask similar questions. What is the purpose of this organization? How do I want to contribute to that? How can I grow as a person to become better at this? They have learned to collaborate. 
So they know collaboration is key if you talk about leadership. And you know, they have learned these lessons not only as an intellectual exercise, but through their hearts. And they have grown leadership capacity because they got inspired, not just because it was required. How can you inspire leaders to grow? You have to touch the hearts. How can you do that? Kindle the fire of inspiration in your own hearts first, because it will spill over to others. Why? Because whatever you grow in your hearts will become more when you share it. If you carry a desire to contribute to the good of everyone, then this desire will spread to other people when you act upon it. Then you are a living example. And that's the most effective way to lead. But if you have a desire to just contribute to your own good, only look after yourself, only care for yourself. This will reveal itself only in egotism. Then you're not even a worthwhile example towards yourself. So that to the degree we live up to be leaders, we will mobilize people, and it really works. The same is true with happiness. You know, this feeling of being free of oneself, free of one's fears and shortcomings and limitations, but still being in the middle of life in its endlessness. This wonderful feeling of feeling happy, feeling joy. Do it in the spirit of sharing it with others, then you can sustain it. You know, and to be happy doesn't mean that everything is perfect. But it means that you have decided to look beyond the imperfections, look beyond the challenges. And our lives are full of challenges. I'm sure each one of us can tell a story about that. You can imagine a challenge as a huge rock being right here in the middle of your path towards the future. And the rock confronts you, this challenge. So you have two choices, two options. First, you can say you can shy away from it. You can avoid it and say, well, no, I'm comfortable in my status quo. But then remember, a comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. If you want to grow, you have to be outside your comfort zone. But you have a second option. You can perceive and embrace this challenge, this rock, as a means, as an enabler, a key ingredient to grow and learn as a person towards a higher purpose, which is far further away than this immediate challenge. Given that you have a life's purpose, you know what your purpose is, then the challenge is not to surmount this rock, this challenge. The real challenge is to live up to your purpose. So let me ask you, what are your rocks in your lives? What ultimate purpose are you striving for? What do you want to grow in your hearts? And what, therefrom, do you want to share with others to inspire them to grow? Thank you. <laughs>